who has to show and prove that she's hard on crime, right? Because she got to cut her teeth. So this is this is where the Democrats was at when when um, Joe Budden had to pass the crime bill in '94. They was coming out of the Bush era, and the, the and the Republicans were saying the Dems was too liberal. They're too soft on crime, which means what? You care too much about these niggas to really put a foot on them, and that makes us worried about you. And we're gonna go tell these white people to see it to next. Hold on, hold on now, <laughs> hold on. If you just need us to see a sacrifice of niggas, that's all you need to just be chill. We're willing to do that, right? And then you become the bargaining chip to keep white voters in place so they don't kick these niggas out from the Blue Lodge. That's all this shit is. They playing table tennis with your black ass and you ain't figured it out yet, right? But you want me to join you because it's miserable at top. But, but no, I'm gonna be over here just watching this shit. <laughs>
They went against the grain and lost loved ones. Not like I walked out on you in Delbert Blair's case, you know, physically his wife was taken from him, you know, to, to shut up the message and, and not have this information spill over that you can Google now. So we take we take a lot. Um, we don't we don't have enough in consideration for the dedication that these men and these women like laid it on the line for just to get us information that for the most part we may have taken for granted you know but i i i do you know um i accept the challenge i don't feel like i'm a master teacher yet i'm more like a master student mm. and i'm still learning ways to be better at mastering that yeah. you know what i'm saying for sure Blue, it's crazy, man, because the past, I'll probably say like three months, I was thinking, all right, you know, we was having this guest on, that guest, but I was like, okay, we'll probably have like Blue on soon. And it was so wild because it was like building up. And I was like, I think it's time. And before I was even going to contact you, and it was going to be like that very next day, High Hill, she had already hit me up. Right. And she was telling me, yo, Blue Red, is it cool, you know, if everybody pulls up? And we right, just captured yes. that conversation. And I'm like, dang, that's crazy time. And I was just about to hit blew up. And then to take that even further, me and the team, we're outside just vibing, taking a little smoke break, chilling. Everybody's just building right. outside. Yeah. And then out of all times, Blue, that you've come to the studio, you pull up right to the side of the building exactly yeah. where I, all of us are. And I just found out today that was a one way. <laughs> so I was like, not only did I do that and pull up in the back, I wasn't even supposed to be going down that block. I went the opposite way to to end up, you know, connecting. And I was gonna pick my phone up and call. I had my phone in my hand, and there you were. And I'm like, if 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 you ever needed a confirmation mm. about, you know, synergy mm. and again the magnetism of magnetic fields being on time and on purpose. These are the things that are self-affirming, you know, that we don't have to run through primary sources or hmm. convince nobody about. Hmm. It's the feeling that you get when you know. Hmm. And that's deep. The feeling that you get when you know. Hmm. So that's him seeing. You're engaging both hemispheres of your, your brain, logic, and the feeling that goes along with it. You like, logically, this makes sense. But God damn it, I feel it. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what amplifies it and makes it a real thing. So we can say, yeah, we've had real interactions. You know, we could say that we can identify, you know, spirit at, at play in the things that we do, right? And, and we know when we got one because of that. You're like, yeah, energetically wise, yeah, I know I got one. You know, Come something on. that has just been captured on cellular fame or a Memorex or, you know, the, the, the different versions of how we are now cataloging content. You know that it was a snapshot of a moment in time when you are naturally and authentically yourself in the zone, mm -hmm. right? In spirit. Yes. Ghetto telepathy, man. You got out wow, of the car, yes. Blue. And that's the first <laughs> thing that you said. And I remember myself, Sid, we was like, yo, Blue was just talking. It was crazy. And right. those were the first two words that came out of your mouth was ghetto telepathy from the great A.A. Rashid. Yes. If you can, brother, please just break that down because, man, in real time, Black people, as you know, here in the South, have this saying, bro, I just spoke you up. Yes. But that happened in that moment. So if you can, can you please yes. break so down that? Maybe maybe it was either earlier that day or a day. It might have been earlier that day. I was listening to a replay of A.A. Rashid's latest appearance on Black Magic 363. And he was speaking about a, a topic that he, he termed ghetto telepathy. <laughs> and... Um, ghetto telepathy in his summation is the thing that, that we as a people quote unquote naturally do and that is use our telepathic powers without knowing that we're using our telepathic powers case in point he used himself as an example and I concur that he lived on a 15th, he lived on the 15th floor um, in his building in Clinton Hills so you really got to if somebody's coming to see you, they're really supposed to be there to see you. You know what I'm saying? Lord forbid if the elevator's broken, you got to go downstairs and open the door. That really got to be somebody <laughs> that you want to be there to really come and see, see you. Yeah. So out of necessity, we start developing these latent powers that we fall back on, not even knowing, thinking it's all just in our imagination. But later on in life, in hindsight, 
you'd be like, yo, that was my first indication about I had some real powers. So the intercom go off and before you click it and ask who that is, you have the ability to conjure in your mind who that is. You know what I'm saying? And then you click and you ask and they confirm it. And you be like, damn, I got that. I'm nice with that. Or the, the phone ring or before you pick it up, you know who that was that, that's calling you. Again, if you're in that zone, if you're in that pocket of time when you're presently present, you can pick up on these because these are just signals. You know what I'm saying? So ghetto telepathy is sight beyond sight, right? It's, it's us utilizing the ability of our ability to see in darkness to see in darkness, right? And then because the the, the structures that we're commonly, you know, we in buildings and all, we, you know what I mean? We, we just, you know, you're just seeing in darkness, you know what I'm saying? And distance is an illusion, you feel me? So we have a symbiotic, energetic, energetic, synergetic relationship to one another, again, through magnetic fields, where if you just close your eyes and trust, you know, you could see more than when open eyes are looking at the things that they're looking at. They shouldn't be able to trust because it's all an illusion. See how that works? Mm. Come on, Blue. Come on, brother. Again, man, this sure. conversation, so many people are searching for this it's going to mm -hmm. be needed blue because you were on my heart heavy and it's crazy yes. how it's the perfect time because right now there's so much that's going on oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and people need to hear it from you your mindset your perspective when you first came upstairs you had told me some and it was a bar you said bro i've been in the gym physically and spiritually and you were talking about a spiritual leg day and for <laughs> all the people who's in the gym yeah, today was Shoot, <laughs> this was what me and Sid on Monday. Leg day, everybody's vibe is different when you pull up to the gym. See, upper body, even full body, you know, everybody's like, all right, cool. I'm trying to get like this good, this good stuff in real quick. Right. Quick little pump. But then when it's leg day, you already know, bro, you got to get your mind right. Whew. And then once you add that spiritual component into that, I can only imagine. So, bro, what exactly is a spiritual leg day for all the people? Oh. Uh, Okay, you know, since leg day is something that people commonly skip, hmm. you feel me? Then you know this the thing specifically that you need to be doing and focused on. Um, metaphorically, leg day will represent the basement, right? And the attic. So these are places that you technically don't go in the house. You have trepidations about going. You really need a reason to go into the basement. But everything that you might be looking for might be packed away somewhere in the basement, right? Underneath cobwebs and things of that, of that nature. It could be old historical records about your family's history. You know what I'm saying? It could be bread in, in, in the form of a check or, you know, a, a trading, a, a, a card, a, a baseball trading card that might be worth $5 million now. Like, your folks might have had Willie Mays rookie card. You Satchel know what I'm saying? Like, you just don't know because yeah. you just never went and checked it. You you thought that it was junk, thought that it was just like they tell us about junk DNA, right? But just like religion tells <laughs> us that you got the curse of ham, mm. right? You took their word for it, didn't do the categorical research. Somebody told you that you was the people of ham, so the curse fell on you. You accepted this burden and you have been wearing this weight for forever and a day. But if you would just have went and searched, if you just would have went a step further and found out, even if that was the case, that means that, damn, you like, well, if it was 400 years and my people been here since 1619, according to some records, 1555, according to others. And for others, they're saying in perpetuity that they've been here. Nonetheless, according to the narrative of the scripture, your curse would have been over in 2019. So we don't even go to those lengths and those extents. And that's because what? We're skipping leg day, right? That's like you skipping the hamstring. The curse of ham is synonymous with you skipping hamstring pains, right? Because what it implicates is just too painful for you to be willing to go there. But you got to go through the plant and the pain in order to get them gains. Right. So our hamstring is a bicep of our legs. If you want power, you got to engage the hamstrings. Right. But you got to be semi insane to go through the pain of knowing what you're going to, you know, entertain by straining your hamstrings. That means that you might get Charlie horses for the rest of the day. That means that you might be hobbling and wobbling. 
That means that you can't pimp strut the same way. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be on your A game. You're going to be exposed. Right? So you got to be willing to make those sacrifices. You got to be willing to go in the basement and to find out whether there's a monster there or not. Just the same way you got to be willing to go into the bed. Same way you got to be willing to go in the closet. But they got us with all these things, right? And now we scared of the dark. But we black. So the people that are synonymous with death and darkness are scared of death and darkness. But you want to defend the brand and the label, right? Based on the whatever rewards you think come along with it. You feel me? But there's punishments to go along with it as well. And we're about to find out what the flip side of the coin looks like. Right. <laughs> when you got people representing the brand that are not brand ambassadors of the brand. Now, the brand is already suffering from brand damage globally. Right. It's suffering from self-awareness, self-identity and brand damage. Mm. Right. So, yeah, um, there's a spiritual component to leg day. And I also noticed that you can't be a leader without legs because how are you gonna lift the people your propensity to be able to carry an issue or carry the people right totally correlates to the, your ability to hold up your own weight because the only way that you can do something for someone is if you're able to do it yourself and duplicate it you have to be operating in abundance to give anything other than that is just you know you're a narcissist and 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 you you're 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 just headed for unfortunately you know what I'm saying? Crash out culture and our community has just undergone that way too many times. So it's like, are you doing this for us or you or what? what's the play here? And it has to be you first because it can't be us until it's you because us is you apostrophe S. So if you're not focusing on you, if you're not the best version of you, how can you carry the people? The people got heavy baggage. They got their heavy weights. They're heavy plates. You feel me? So your unwillingness to get in there and leg press 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12 plates, 16 plates, how are you going to carry these people up to the mountaintop of Providence? Right? Because, again, these stories to us might be, you might have the option of going your whole life arguing with yourself as to whether these are literal stories or they're archetypical stories that are teaching lessons. And there are lessons at the end of the day. So even if you throw the baby out, you can't throw the bathwater with it because these are integral parts and stories of a hero's journey that they have just condensed into the modern day Heru or hero, which is the Christos that coincides with the astrological time that we're in. But moving into a new epoch or a new era or a new time, what does that say? What does that denote? What instructions are that signaling? To those that are cosmically aware of where they are at in the cosmos. Wow. Come on, Blue. So, yeah, you can't skip leg day for many reasons. And yeah. also, I, I just want to give one last reason. Now, please. And this was my journey, my last my last leg to conquer, right? The last leg of my of my journey, my hero's journey to find out. The law of 44, the last bit, piece, and component, I have all of this external information about it. You know what I'm saying? And Spirit was like, you you have to personalize it, not to the degree where you make it so much about you, but what is it anatomically? Mm. You know? And I have a lot of different ways to decipher it, but the very most simplest way that was shown to me in the gym is that your forearms, right, and your quads... Or your 44s. And this is where you generate testosterone from. So specifically for men, for leadership and women as well. Because what we use for testosterone is the same thing that women are using in the gym for testosterone. To build up their base and their foundation. Which is they got their legs, their wombs. They, got, they have a stronger propensity to have a stronger lower half than us. Because their magnetic field is stronger. Or they can generate a even more powerful magnetic field because they have a womb and a mind. So that's a mind mind, right? They have wide, wider hips. Their glutamus is giving them the necessary lipids that it takes to generate an amount of power that is unprecedented. So we're on the cusp of seeing whether a 
concocted melanated woman is going to be the face of the biggest brand on the planet, which is America Inc. Right. And while we might have our own observations um, and trepidations and reservations about her as a candidate, right? What she represents, right? As okay, so I'm like, am I jumping? Should I wait for the questions or I'm just going in? Jump. Peace, family. If you're a content creator and you rely on AdSense or brand deals for money, you're letting everyone sell something to your audience but you. You should be selling your content directly to your followers using Peep. YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok all make it hard for you to monetize. They tell you what they're going to pay you for your content and then delay paying you all together. With Peep, you determine what your content is worth and when you get paid. You can upload pictures, videos, PDFs, even audio files. Just set your price, share it to your followers on any platform, and watch the money roll in. If you're a YouTuber, podcaster, model, artist, if you're a human posting on the internet, I'm telling you, you can use Peep. Just click the link in the description to get started. Now let's get back to the show. Hey, it's Kamala, time to cook, Blue. You good? And I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Kamala. Kamala. Yes, okay. Yes, is this is the political correct? Is it Kamala? Kamala. Before all the black women jump. Okay. Kamala. So it's Kamala. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Look, they all looked up. Because I, I, I was <laughs> waiting for the head pop. Because you know, if you yeah, say it, it right, hey, we like let me try this out. Hey, Blue said she was texting when you said her name. She. Yeah. Hey, hey, it was, it was all like, cute. let me try this out. Am I doing this right? <laughs> So I'm rolling the dice just to see because right. I don't be knowing nah, Kamala. You're good. Kamala. So Kamala, Kamala is a version of Kali, right? Mm. And that version of Kali represents time. Okay. And I remember people tend to forget, and I hope you know when I, because you know I be I be just be rolling the dice, yeah. right? But I be having like, I have receipts, so it's like <laughs> I don't be get up here saying the most outlandish issue, then you can't Google it after the fact and find the copies of the receipts. Mm. So she was president for 85 minutes before. And people tend to forget this, that Joe Biden had to go down for surgery. And she, on a Friday, became a president sitting in a chair. It was for 85 minutes. Coincidingly, this was the same day that Kyle Rittenhouse got acquitted, right? For the murder that he did, I believe it was up in Wisconsin. But what I found very interesting is that Kyle Rittenhouse's uh ancestors a man a man named david rittenhouse david rittenhouse was a uh, uh one of the most interesting figures that we don't know about right he was a scientist mathematician a mathematician i call it you know um he was i think the 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 first person that had the um he created an astrolab right which is a device where he can measure when eclipses are gonna happen and this was right around eclipse season when they was having the blood moons and the full moons and everything. Um, the American philosoph. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff that this man had done. And it all dealt with time. Right. The way that he mastered time and catalog time. So these people be having favors. You know what I'm saying? That their forebearers or their children benefit from. I've benefited haphazardly from favors that come along with my name and I don't even know where they've come from. But I know that these these men that were sitting on these particular in these positions were people that were part of secret societies. And they was trying to attempt to give me the whole breakdown about who I was when I was in my teens, you know, running around. Like I had lost my mind. Right. These these were the people that were able to help reel us in by showing us a picture of who we were and what our potential was and what our assignment was, reminding us of our assignment. So you 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 just don't know who sits in these positions and oversees certain things and you know what I mean, how they look out um for people that they recognize. Cause there's always, you know, in those situations, people that are there to serve the light and people that are there to serve the dark. You know what I mean? So the day that she became president was synonymous with there was a lot of events going on that was speaking about time. But the version of Kali that she represents is a version that c coincides and connects with time. You know what I'm saying? She was known as a DA on the West Coast because she did what? Locked the niggas up. She gave niggas a pocket full of time. Mm. 
You know what I'm saying? She's synonymous with time. So she's now in alignment with a particular time whose time has come. And that's the rise of the divine feminine. Whether we want to say, oh, she's a demi, this or they call on her. If you're going to call her a Jezebel, she's a divas because of her in this Kushite, you know, ancestry. Like, let's we just getting so far removed from ourselves. Right. In your theosophical, philosophical, ideological arguments, you want to claim everything is melanated and say that India was in this Kush and it was black. And the cast was this. So we know who the Aryans are. We know who the Dravidians are, right? We know who the Tamil Nadu are. We know who the people of Southern India are versus the people in Northern India, right? But you also want to say that the earth is flat because <laughs> you want to coincide with the conversation that was instituted when George Bush got in in 2001 and said that they're crusading, Right? then they want the mindset of what was taking place during the times of the crusade. So they have thrown all of the ideological philosophical conversations back to that time. And during that time, they say when the earth was flat, but they said that they was selling over here because they wanted to go to India. Hence the fact that they have East India Dutch company, West India Dutch company. Right. So they thought that they initially was coming here to India. If Kamala did I see? Kamala, right? Kamala, Look, she likes right? It. They if don't Kamala play <laughs> is sitting in the seat, she would literally be a Indian president sitting in the seat when America turns 250 years, right? And it's initially supposed to be India. Here's the fact that everything west of here is called what? Got the West Indies. The West Indies, right? Yep. And I don't see them doing ethnological tests for people who say that they West Indian, Indian. automatically wow. Wow. you were assumed to be what? West Indian. Black. Yup. Caribbean. He's black. Afro-Caribbean. But he's black. Right. Yes. But this this yeah. individual represents the place where the caste system was created, mm -hmm. which is East India. Right. Right. And then she's showing you the easy, the easy exploitation of a label or a brand that has no borders. Whose fault is that? Is that hers? Or is that yours as people who are pledging allegiance to a brand that have no brand protocol? They don't got no rules. You don't know who comes in, who goes out. And this was the issue that we faced earlier this year with the battle. Right. When they said that when Kendrick said they're not like us again, was it was he speaking about cultural differences I think he specifically was speaking about ethnicity. You know, I observed it differently through my lens. You know what I'm saying? And people may have picked up on it. But again, it showed the gaps in blackness. It showed the gaps in a brand with no borders. You feel me? So what, what are you speaking of? Is a black American different from a black Canadian? Right? Is amalgamation, which way does it go? Is it your mother got to be there? Because it used to just be one drop or one drip. So is there ethnic differences? Is there cultural differences? Do you niggas even know? They don't, right? But we still get in our feelings when white boys say nigger with the ER, right? You want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> How emotionally unstable and undeveloped are you that you can be so easily triggered and, and, and girded into a fight that you, you know, that you also duck and phase from. Mm. Because the way that I see melanated men getting up under the deodorant of white supremacy and telling me it's okay because it's warmer over here. <laughs> I'd rather be under a white man's deodorant than between a black woman's thighs. That's what they're telling you. Right? Even if it smell like curry, they like, nah, son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This yeah. redneck musk. <laughs> This must right now. Huh? Deodor? Yeah, I like it here. I'm used to this. Yeah. I know what this is like. Mm. That's a new reality I'm scared of. I'm not willing to go there because then it challenges the aspect of the my manhood that has already been fractured subconsciously because I live in a society where I can't exert my masculinity. Tell me different, nigga. Mm. And you're lying to yourself. Hard ER. Hmm? Hard ER. 
hard ER, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's what, so we're at the place where the ceiling has crashed and they want to blame it just on Puff and say it was a 30 year run and this and that. But no, this started in the 70s, right after integration, because hip hop is just a reflection of the decisions that we made when we crossed over and crossed in to a burning house that we knew it was burning. And we still came in the house to say, look, nigga. I've been waiting to get in this house to watch this TV all my life. That smoldering and burning is just going to have to stop. Let's put the towel here. We know how to deal with this shit. But I'm not getting out of this house because I want to see that wall mounted TV, even if it's charred. It's better than looking at it outside through the window, which is where you have been used to all your life. So you ran over Rantrod. Niggas ran in Vietnam. They ran everywhere. Right. When they was allowed to come into the house, they ran into their schools, they ran into their jobs. We ran into abandoned buildings. We ran into everywhere. But luckily in 1977, during a blackout in New York, niggas ran into the record store and they came out with speakers, mixers, turntables. Right. And that became the, the, the technological revolution that creates hip hop. You feel me? And that's how hip hop was birthed out of blackness in 1977. That's what, that was the real come up. Not, not you know, no disrespect to Cool Herc in, in the party in 73 and all of the confusion around all of that. But it was a technological jump when we were able to get our hands on instruments, right? Afford the things that we weren't able to afford, right? So it was too easy. Crack cocaine come along. And then niggas will make every excuse in the book to say, I'm going to partner with the devil to do the devil's work because I want to dress like the devil, drink like him, eat like him. And he just let me in the building and I just had this liquidity issue. But now I got a way to solve it. I don't want to hear nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know what this is like. You ain't had this option. You had to walk two miles to school. Daddy, chill. (laughs) You feel me? I'm here to live out your dream. What did you sign up for? How else we going to get it? Can't be through hard work. We don't got enough time. Mm. Mm. Right? We got to play catch up. But you don't know that you 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 made a deal with the devil. You know what I'm saying? Or you already was coming out of a bad one that was going on for 400 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That you, you wore the burden because the nigga who was 900 years old has not learned how to master his wine and his children seen his junk and he put a curse on his grandchildren. What type of elder is that? And, and we're going along with these stories and we made them real and we got to pay the price. But, you know, what, what we got to see in our lifetime was the negotiation, the blood contract, the blood co- covenants, niggas throwing the baby and the bathwater out, right? For for momentary pleasure. I grew up in it. I don't care what nobody say. I know what niggas so they sold for. Rubber sole sneakers, right? 14 karat gold. It wasn't even a real shit. You know what I'm saying? Being able to take shorty to the motel. That wasn't even your whiz. I know what I saw. I know what they did it for. Nobody's mama made it out the projects. So you can't tell me that, yo, I, I did this cut. And even if she did, the, the house you got foreclosed when when the case came and they snatched everything that you bought with drug funds. And I don't know nobody that has any standing institutions from the 80s that built something off of drug money. It was a complete wash, like. Complete. Right. And that created gaps and holes in our magnetic field and our masculinity, right? Especially the way that you decide if you're going to sell your soul for materialism, then you the nigga that your nana was warning you about all them years reading that goddamn book. You became him overnight, right? You, you became the nigga that Job would never be, right? For some trinkets, and we've never recovered from that. And they got a nerve to try to blame that shit on slavery, post-traumatic slaves, that shit. No, slaves were upperly mobile post-slavery, post their, you know, their, 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 um, their capture, you know, their imprisonment, whatever you want to call it. That stop blaming this on slaves. 
This was not slave activity. This was denying somebody of some shit that they desire because they feel less than and they equate their equality or equanimity along with yours and is measured in materialism, right? Because they're, they're prisoners are really of capitalism more so than anything else. So you deny somebody of something all their lives and you deny them of an identity. And the fact is, you you know that that's not true, but you can't convince yourself of it. Case in point, all of the inventions that we made directly coming out of, quote unquote, slavery. Right. Where did that happen? I still ask people to this day to tell me about, about Black Wall Street. I'm like, all right. So you're speaking. You're telling me that these people were masters of industry. Well, how many years of school did they go to? They got certifications and licenses, PhDs. You seen them on the wall? How did they do it? You told me that they walked here barefoot from Greenwood, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. You told me that these were the people that got ran out of <clears throat> North Carolina and Georgia because of the Indian Removal Act because they found gold in North Georgia. And that the Cherokee had them as slaves. That's what you're trying to tell me. But they go and they build up industry, not just the city. They were the best at what they did. They had a jitney service. They built the airport. They was doctors, lawyers, the best. How did this happen? And why are these people don't have monuments in D.C. as the edification of what being upwardly mobile as a true American citizen looks like? These were the, uh, the, 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 the quintessence of what it means to be an American. If what you're telling me is true, even if what you're telling me is not true. Also, these people are all they have evidence that they have providence from the most high, because if you're saying that you drove them. From the south into what considered what the, the white man thought was barren land, but it was oil rich. That's called providence. Why we don't know none of them people's names? Why we don't know the names of their businesses? You know what I'm saying? Why are we not edifying them as the the best amongst us? Why are they not the example? Why they're not? Why why are they not? Why are they not martyred? Why are they not defended? Why You know what I'm saying? So many questions. But then we, we be wondering why things happen to us. We be wondering why we look so goofy. We be wondering why the brand is so damaged. And we've had a lot to do with it. We've been given the opportunity to do different. And we, we, we go for the cheese every single time. And we going for the cheese right now. Understandably, but we're going for the cheese. Jeez, Blue. Synergy is crazy, brother, because I'm going to tell you why. Alonzo Herndon, he was one of the, or arguably the first black millionaire in the South, right? Yes. And he was the main proponent of Auburn Avenue. And, you know, that yes. being richer yes. than what Black Wall Street was yes. in Tulsa. And what's crazy is right before you had walked in, his great, great nephew, he had just stopped by. Wow. And we were sitting down with him chopped it up and our doc that we've been filming for almost two years now has been about Auburn Avenue unearthing that Word. the black Mecca and here in Utah blue gotta have you on the doc yeah. but those words it was crazy because he was expressing the same sentiments yes Alonzo Herndon right he was enslaved and you're talking about a man who was okay, enslaved so my dude he did Herndon did insurance <clears throat> Atlanta Life came, Insurance yeah company. he was he was his story has to be told, man. He was called. And that's what we were just talking about, was right? He, the, he was doing barber too? Yes, sir. He was so On P Street. Now, Blue, what people, what they don't talk about, right? People talk about Black Wall Street all the time. Yeah. But there is a certain energy that attracts Black people to Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't talk about Auburn Avenue, which is right up the street. They, which yeah, was have no idea. They noted have no as the richest Negro that. street in the world, right? And Black Wall Street, that happened... Tulsa with the race riots, 1921, I believe, yes. right? But if we go back 10, 15 plus years, 1906, it happened down here. How about that? On Peace Street. In the South. And Auburn Avenue. That's right. It was a standoff. Put it down. His great, great nephew, Adam, shout out to Adam, bro. Great brother. He flew down. But he had told us that we actually stood our ground, that we had the shotguns, that we were actually fighting back, that we was actually putting foot to ass, if you will. And Alonzo, he was called because he had so much power. But Blue, what what do you think internally 
energy wise, metaphysically, if you will, that our ancestors from that time period had, because like what you said, we were upwardly mobile. What type of vibe, spirit did they have that made them so special? Because, man, we talk about this American dream, but they actually did that. Again, um, they had a determination and a willingness. Willpower was stronger because they had not yet violated the magnetic field of the body politic of who and what they were. Right. So my ideas, my thoughts, my identity about who I am and what I want to <clears throat> achieve. You know, it can be personal, but it's going to be amplified if it's shared by you. It's going to be amplified, you know what I'm saying, if it connects like nodes in the computer do, mm -hmm. you know, let's say either diasporically or across the nation, right? They call that a hundred monkey theory. Like I'll, I'll be pop locking in the Bronx and somebody's pop locking in Inglewood. How do they, you know, we ain't have TV. We, You know what I'm saying? Like how do they know to pick up on the vibe? Magnetic fields, you know what I'm saying? So we hadn't compromised that magnetic field as a people yet. I think that we were moving, even if we weren't speaking to one another, we know, look, coming out of this, we want to do whatever the next level is. We want to go to wherever that next place is. We want to live like master lived. If we was able to work for master and pay them bills for master and sustain master's living, why can't we do that for ourselves? If we could feed ourselves and master them still don't know how to do that, why are we even calling her master? You know what I'm saying? What's masterful about someone who can't master their environment? You know what I'm saying? You got to master somebody else to be a master on your behalf. You're not a master. That's something else. And we need to call it what it is, but it's not mastering self. It's not mastery of self. You know, so we were left with no choice but to be masters of our destiny. All right. And, and then when you when you you're framing yourself in that, when you're looking at yourself like that, when you're remembering, you feel me yourself in that space, in that place, however many lifetimes ago. Right. Then you're, you're, you're left with no choice. And I think that that's in that's particularly where we were seeing these men and these women who were breaking the mold and rising to the occasion. They was writing a new story that had never been written. You know what I mean? And they had so much to work with in terms of an open terrain, an open playing field, even if the playing field wasn't level, right? It's 10X totally from being in captivity. Anything outside of that is 10X. So you unleash these people who have a paramount amount of potential and they potentially may be the best seeds because of the, the breeding and the pruning process that goes along with making someone who's a hard worker, right? Someone who may potentially be able to solve some things or figure some things out. You know what I mean? So I think that we were looking at, you know, uh, some unprecedented individuals that we should spend a lot more time attempting to learn about. Because it's it's a necessary, it's a very vital chain in our link of self-development. When we speak about breaking generational curses, when we speak about, you know, going to 23 and me to find out who I is, and we go back so many generations. And then shout out to Professor Kaba. When you do the math on them generations, mm, yeah. when you go back yes. with 20 generations, you got a hundred thousand ancestors in the room with you, like these are the out of the trillions of them that you that you travel and you roll with. You know, what I mean, that you should visualize and see yourself showing up with a trillion ancestors. Right. And it just same way you got a trillion cells, you got a trillion ancestors. You're a trillionaire and tell yourself that all the way and every day, you know, that's who I am. That's how I'm rolling. That's the force that I represent. And you wouldn't be lying to yourself. But how many of us have the capacity mentally to absorb that reality and move in that space and then be, you know, mindful of somebody else's like, yeah, I can't step. You know what I mean? Because I see the trillion that come with you, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it changes our reality. So. We are so we're much more comfortable in the illusion. Yeah. You know, the illusion is so gratifying. Ignorance is so blissful. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, you hearing it from somebody that. You know, um, ignorant was it was it was different. It was blissful, and 
you get a lot more magic done sometimes <laughs> in your ignorance mm-hmm. because you don't be getting in your own way. You know what I'm saying? You just you just do it. You're just surviving. You're doing it. You know, I remember just being in the streets and um we was doing so much magic and never would call it that. You know what I mean? Because again, you you you're in survival, you're back against the wall, you're left with no choice. You're gonna have to figure it out in order to survive to the next day. You're in the middle of a war. You're playing cops and robbers with the police. You know, things gotta manifest or happen for you, and then they happen. And you'll never stop to be like, yo, that yo, I did that. Like, that was me being intentional. You know? You just be like, God bless you know the trap niggas. Mm. Keep it moving. Come on. You know? Hey, you cooking blue because on that point, Black Dot, shout out to Urban X, man. Shout out to Urban X, yes. On Monday night, right, he was talking about how being in the streets, those kids are actually living life the way it's actually supposed to be lived. Although it's not being geared in the right direction, to yes. your point, they're living on the edge, manifesting and seeing things happen every single day it's an adventure because you might not even know i might not even make it right on that standpoint blue there is this phenomenon going on right now and i'm 27 our age group is like turning into uncles and aunties but still young at the same time right and young niggas man yn's what everybody call them on social media with Uh the shysties these kids are different blue Seeing yeah. them, how they move around, even going outside, like talking to the people outside. Yeah. All the young niggas riding around on the scooters with the shysties on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making plays. These kids, they're fearless. What do you think makes these young niggas so influential right now? Because these kids are different, Blue. Um, again, you know, we we have to put in perspective the skinny jean niggas' is parents <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's real though. <laughs> hey, these kids different, Blue. Everybody walking around scared of the YNs. That's what they say, bro. I'm scared of the young niggas, man. For real? Yeah. Hey, it's people saying that. Yeah, I mean, again, I can imagine. Like, I remember I remember being a YN. And you know, <laughs> I remember, you know, I hopped off the porch when I was 14. That was mm. 1989. Wow. And you looking up. And these dudes is 800 feet tall, 250 pounds of solid muscle, Mm. gold ropes on and gold teeth and red eyes. Mm. And you just around dinosaurs, pterodactyls and shit. And you just like, it it was an ill terrain. It was an ill adventure to navigate this terrain, to figure out, you know, where it may potentially come from next because bodies is dropping. It's just warfare. And again growing up in that environment like it was literally like every night sounded like vietnam you know and but these was vietnam vests that came home that was hiding underneath their beds because their children who they left had become you know (laughs) serial murderers you know 13 14 bodies at the age of 13 and 14 you know i'm saying automatic weapons and and then you know, the, the the parents is having PTSD. So they hear and he said, and they don't want to confront their children. They just totally, I just saw them un- living under siege yeah. by their own children. And their children had taken the reins and their, their passion, their drive and their desire, right? To have what they needed to appease their feeling of emptiness or, you know, basicness or you know what i'm saying unworthiness you know but really their driving desire just to have the things that they desire to acquire the things that you desire so you can be on par with the people that you look at on tv celebrity worship at its initial basic you know because the tv has only been out since the 50s and it was only in color since the 70s around the same time that we integrated and the things that we see in the commercials we had to have them but we could not afford them up until a point in time when we was given the opportunity to make this extra bread, right? And we went for it. So these children is just the latest iteration of the things that was created in my generation in the seventies when Pluto was in Libra, right? What does that mean? Pluto's transformation. Libra is relationships, but it's also the family dynamic. 
you know, this is when the latchkey children arose because the family dynamic has changed in the late 60s to the early 70s. And now for the first time ever, children are raising themselves. That never happened before. And then, you know what I'm saying? You get the Pluto and Scorpion generation and forget about it. That was the people that started transmuting sexual experiences. This is where the FOs and everything else has found this place at home because these are those children that was they was born during some weird times. You know what I'm saying? And these are the parents now of these children. So I totally get what I'm looking at. You know what I mean? It, it is the um it's the cultural breakdown of society and we belong to a death culture. So when the babies tell you they're on demon time, believe them. Mm. Believe them. <laughs> wow. It's that simple. They out here racking bodies up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it you cross over, you do it, you're somewhere different when that's your pastime and that's your hobby. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, again, compromising the magnetic field. The body politic of the people, the fact that this music is our entertainment and it has been that way for a dozen years now, started in 2012, immediately after Trayvon Martin got killed is when Chief Keith came out and there was this swelling of a protest about Trayvon Martin and Black Lives Matter and the Chief Keith came out. And then just like I was like, nigga, it's hard to believe you telling me that you value black life so much. And this little nigga is clearly telling you that they drilling and it becomes a hit. And then Ye jumps on the remix and it's out of here. And he was never able to corral it back. And then academics pops up not too long after that. And he's curating and refereeing this in the digital sense. And now it spreads internationally because there's nothing more attractive than black death. Ain't nothing like it. That is the pinnacle cream de la cream of entertainment the concept of fratricide of niggas killing one another never hey give it huh. and then your white audience can observe it like they're at the top of a safari um bus going through the hood this concrete jungle all of the dangerous things that they've been told about it now they get a front so a front a front seat to it a front row seat and they can go on the adventures as well because it's very adventurous you know what I'm saying? It's very adventurous. But these are children. These are children now that are helming the responsibility of grave diggers and life takers. They obviously had to be bred on that and raised on that in a music form. Now, what is the child that's six months old that sits in the baby seat? They got to listen to DMX on his way to school every day. What type of child is that going to be by the time it's six? I'm just saying, let's be real. Let's be real. Your baby been listening to Eminem since they was in in in, in the belly, right? Your, your baby been listening to the whole Griselda catalog, and they can't they can't shift through the nuances to be like nigga. It feels like y'all like this too much for y'all to be telling me a cautionary tale, right? Who's raising the babies sonically, visually, right? energetically in terms of a community where we co-sign they on the timeline just like everybody else is just like all of the uh surveillance organizations are, are creating databases and right behavioral profiles that's what they keep telling you over algorithms nigga who who do we think is supplying them we so we've consistently done that for 30 years in, in a stupor under p diddy but it go back before that we've been Damage the magnetic field, the things that used to protect us. When Granny says she put a prayer up and I pray for you, nigga, at some point that shit got gaps and holes in it, like like the uh the ozone layer. <laughs> oh, Cause you stole from Granny. Mm. Mm. The same Granny that was <laughs> praying for you. Nigga, you was ruffling through her purse. Might have stole the lotto ticket. Did she, you know, the numbers and all of that shit? Like, yeah, like. We, we did a lot to ourselves to put ourselves in this position where they still making watermelon jokes about us on stage. Hmm. And nobody's in a rage. Even though, once again, that's a lack of 
self-development and self-intelligence if you are so easily goaded into reactionary politics but we we react for everything else so i'm just able to gauge that our normal reactivity has been watered down like bad kool-aid and the things that were supposed to be offensive to us is no longer offensive and the things that we're offended by you like what, what is the value in it though what are we gonna get out of that yeah Jeez. you know what i'm saying yeah there's there's no power on the other end or the other side of us unifying to do the things that we do to cancel the people that we cancel where the people that really should be canceled that can be of detriment to our personal development those are the things that we're willing to overlook because we don't feel safe in society and we just don't want to say that hey this already instant classic blue crash out culture earlier you alluded to that i'm, I'm talking about it our now kids we talking about it now our kids talking about i'm gonna crash out grown-ups even now saying yo you gonna make me crash out right right now in hip-hop Lil Dirt, seeing what just transpired with him, who was connected to a Chief Keef. Why is hip hop crashing out right now, Blue, when it comes to a Puff, when it comes to a Lil Dirt getting arrested? His man, he was wearing a wire again, for years. Yeah, again, like I said, it's, it's just an astrological epoch of, let's say, this, this, this astrological phenomena that we're looking at is called Pluto and Aquarius. And again, Pluto is transformation. Aquarius is the future. It's humanity, right? And it's the age that we're in. And it's going to be, Pluto will be moving through this particular transit for 20 years. So until 2044, we're going to be under this, this period of time where everything that we, are, that we know is transforming itself. All of the old paradigms are dying for new ones to be born. So we're looking at the ending of paradigms that are within wheels, within wheels, within wheels. Mm -hmm. So let's say that there's one big concentric wheel, right? Let's say the U.S. is a bigger one, 250 years. Let's say the good old boys within that U.S. good old it, it wheel is like a 150 year legacy, right? Let's say that the Diddy reign in hip hop is a 30 year reign. And that's a concentric wheel within the wheel. Let's say that the Little Dirk drill scene is within 10 to 12 years. Because again, introduced in 2012, right? By way of Chief Keith. In 2020, I say that that was the death blow when they snatched up Slime. Mm. Right? In May of 2022, when Young Thug is locked up, right? During a Scorpio full moon. Now, sex, money, murders was we call in astrology a Scorpio Taurus axis, because sex and uh, sex and murder is Scorpio and Taurus is money. The snake, the symbol that's used for slime, that's Scorpionic, that's Scorpio. You know what I'm saying? Blood, that's Damu, that's 44, that's Scorpio, that's tied to Aries and Mars and everything. So, we we look at that astrologically. We know what we're looking at it's the same time that. There was two um, major coins went down again because Taurus deals with banking, deals with money. So this is when the lunar coin tanked and um, it was Luna and a, another tether coin. But all of this is happening at the same time because it all is being influenced astrologically about times, the ending of times and cycles and things of that nature. So, again, that's why Young Thug was so much in the news right before Young Lil Dirk's situation last week. He was putting in all of the motions for the mistrial. Every single day, he was in the news. And then Dirk came because it's all tethered and connected. So it's the ending of uh, errors. It's, it's, you know, it's the death of the death culture. Um, but hip-hop is, is once it crossed the line of his 50th year that you saw, the entire game got destroyed this year because it's a dominant, it's a nigga hierarchy. So it's a dominant hierarchy. Shout out to A.A. A. Rashida. Who's at the top? You know what I mean? The billionaires, because if it's if it's a cash rule game, you know what I mean? The people with the most amount of bread is going to be at the top. And then the top artists with the most streams is going to be underneath them, you know, after labels and shit like that. And then it's a it's a pecking order that goes along with that. You feel me? And if Drake falls mm -hmm. and yeah. if, if he's connected to the Atlanta artists that he need a stimulus package from, 
Where's Lil Baby at these days? Where's the Migos at these days? Where's Gunna at these days? Where's Young Thug at these days? The only one that continues to remain it's right Pluto. on the ascension is Pluto. Because of what? I just told you we're going into Pluto in Aquarius. Mm. Right? So this nigga knows something <laughs> enough that he got mixtape Pluto cover with the purple assinuation of the light coming out of the dungeon. And he already he already gave us purple rain. Right? Yeah. And yeah. So it was a picture of the dungeon family's Family. crib, right? Yep. Rest in peace to Rico Wade. Yeah. You feel me? And the illest thing to come out of Atlanta as a result has been Pluto. Because he's the he's the hidden villain behind it all. <laughs> Who's been able as a Pied Piper to narrate this whole situation. It's like the same day that Puff get the charge or a few days after that, then the mixtape come out. How people went from being mad about sex trafficking to a nigga who's rapping about sex trafficking. <laughs> So leave it to a Scorpio to pour water on the flames to be like, y'all can't be that serious or mad, right? It's it's what we call selective nigga outrage. It's not real. You feel me? Cause niggas ain't gonna do nothing about it. The 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 for the next 20 years, the generation that's living underneath this is watching it, they're gonna have FO or freak oil parties like it, like we had hooky parties. And they're going to be dripping that footage for the next four or five years, destroying all of our youth. Right. All of our quote unquote, anything that you consider to be an idol, a hero or whatever. Nigga, you about to see them on all fours getting piped in every orifice open. And they're going to slow drip that on us as a society and destroy and denote and denude anything that we've considered to be our foundation and force us. As the book said. To stand on your own too without worshiping idols. Nigga, your identity cannot be tethered to theirs anymore. You cannot. It's something that I coined in like 2013 or 14. Entertanglement, right? Being entangled with entertainers. That we're living our lives vicariously through entertainment. We are entertangled. You feel me? With something that we don't know nothing about what's going on on the other side of that goddamn curtain. And when you tether yourself to something, you tether yourself to all of it. And the dude that's been making his rounds, and shout out to Red Pill, he's been repeating this on, on different podcasts and stuff when he speaks about the three different layers. You know what I'm saying? That you got your public face, you got your private face, you got your secret face. This is what the CIA exploits. These are why all of these are honeypot or, uh, operations. And the honeypot operations were created by the... Um, surveillance agencies right but the mob was the first one to get the drop because they were surveilling j edgar hoover yep. so once he figured out how to finesse that then and i think it goes back way further than that you know what i'm saying this is called statecraft and, and people always have secrets on other people that they use to exploit them there's probably something biblical going on with that all the way back to them times and beyond because that's early history but the honeypot operations, like, you know, if we go macro, micro, you got a macro, Jeffrey Epstein, right? So he's honeypotting for the Mossad. They're getting bankers, titans of industries, politicians, presidents, things of that nature, and compromising positions, right? Let's go uh, lower than that, Donald Trump, right? That he was the sky on of New York City parties before Puff, right? And then he invites somebody like a Puff to his party. Then he gets to see how it goes. Right. And then Puff is running with the Dems back when he does vote or die. So anything involved with the Dems, the person who was the 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 the, the, the person that was honeypotting for them was Harvey Weinstein, because all Democratic fundraising parties out west had to go through Harvey. Right. So you go to his party, you find out that's what they into. And then he gets bit like from a vampire from Lestat. Right. The top vampire. And then he comes and he bites all the, the, the people underneath him. So then he's honey potting for for them for the lower level shit. Yeah, we need record execs, artists and shit like that. Different people. Who saw, so up the goddamn rat chain, they got all of these people 
right? From the rooter to the tutor, <laughs> who they got compromising situations information on, and everyone is outside with a mask on, playing these games in front of the public, that they're even allowing themselves to be manipulated because they just don't want to come out with their fangs and be like, I'm a fucking freak, and this is what I get into anyway. Do you, so what, you vote for me or shop in my business over here? Nigga, this is what I do. <laughs> but again, we live in this false this false reality. Everybody's playing this puritanical Christian shit where we should know well by now we do not live in a Christian nation. And these are not the Christians that you want to be templating your Christianity behind anyway. They had slaves, God damn it. They still try. <laughs> they still talking to you about Christianity. Mm. And they have to explain nothing that they did. Mm. Right? That goes against everything that you have been taught that this stuff's supposed to be about. And they still get in the way with this activity. And we got to sit up here and defend it. Mm. And people who have volunteered for this, because I don't believe in victims. Mm-hmm. We don't play that, huh? Blue, no. speaking on the church, right? Seeing Kamala Harris, right? Kamala. I made sure I said it right, Sid. All right, we good. Being here in Atlanta, yes. going to black churches, making sure that she's trying to secure that black vote. Yeah, yeah. Right now, during this time, Blue, I see so many black people who are starting to detach from the black church. You know, growing up in the South, we used to go to church every single Sunday, but now, a lot of these kids aren't going to church anymore. And, you know, people are starting to find self-awareness and knowledge of self, right? Yes. Um, recently, uh, Jamal Bryant uh, from New Birth, he was yes. on Cam's podcast. And in the first two minutes, he says, Jesus, he was black. It's in our Bibles, it's proven. And in that moment, Cam's like, whoa. And now I'm seeing a T.D. Jakes a month, two months ago, had a sermon where he was talking about black people in the Bible. And I think that because it's people's consciousness of having these conversations and pressuring the black church that are starting to talk about these things. But I need Pope Blue, Pablo Blue, Mm -hmm. your perspective. Um, Why do you think right now during this time that we have black people that's not really rocking with the black church? And then as well of us even being bold enough to have protesters showing up when Kamala was at the black church of saying church and state shouldn't be mixed. Why do you think right now that our boldness towards critiquing the black church is so prevalent right now? Um, Again, uh, there's so many posters that we can post it from post war on drugs, post war on poverty, uh, post Obama, post C-19. There has been so many compromises to the magnetic field of what the black church represents now there was out the there there's on paper two of the most strongest institutions in black america has been the black church and black radio off paper is the black church black radio and black women right shout out to dick gregory this is how he explains it and lays it down and the black church was once an institution that we utilized to gather to galvanize our ideas, thoughts, and concepts. So when we got political, it was always an agenda attached. And these are the places that, you know, we went into to planning mode. Um, but because these institutions are very compromised, and we've seen that during the Obama years, and we definitely saw that during the Trump years when they was going to the White House, kissing the ring and things that. of that nature. You're right. You're right. So for Trump to be running on a Christian card, <laughs> a Christian nationalist card, I, I, one, I think that we're left with no choice. The pastors are left with no choice. Shout out to Pope Pablo because, you know, <laughs> I was speaking on this, you know, when, when I put the frock on, I said, if anything else, I want to stand on the basis that if there was a Jesus, he had to be melanated. Why don't we speak about that in the South, especially if we're in the South? So it was my open call to pastors, reverence, and all of them to get back into that information. And then I snuck away and got into but, you know, I want to talk about the minerals. I want to talk about the breastplate. I want to talk about the crystals. I want to talk about the gems who, unfortunately, Jamal Bryant has castigated. This is another reason I put the flock on because I was being attacked down here. Well, you know, and when I'm saying attack, not physically, but smirks and dirty looks by, you know, people who are members of these congregations. I was going into the new birth with CBD and helping 
women who were sitting in the front row listening to Jamal and watching him jump up and down and they were still walking out of there with pain. And then I catch him in the foyer with my setup and before they got out to the door, they wouldn't have no more pain because I put that God's miracle plan, I put that rub on them, right? And then they asked me, they'd be like, you got one of them pre-rolls on you? <laughs> this is what they want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Right? Stop locking them down. Hmm. And then we freed them up. But then they would look and then, you know, they would look at my crystals or they out if I'm burning sage. And then you 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 see the, you know what I mean, the confusion and be like, yo, where you get that from? And they'd be like, from him. And I had seen him on a podcast saying, you know, speaking on things that wasn't true about what the Bible say about crystals. And I went and looked for myself, and that's not what it said. And they had 400 plus mentions of crystals in the Bible that were all positive. And God is a rock. And the church was built on a rock. Peter. And Jesus was a rock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and everything was rocks. Everything was stones. And these are basic stones. A crystal is a precious stone. Right? Jerusalem is built out of it. The 12 breastplates of the priesthood of Aaron. You know what I'm saying? All 12 stones coincided with tribes, which so coincided with the Zodiac. Right? And... It was set up in a way in which you could not put the breastplate on and lie, according to the narrative. So why did they castigate the stones? Because they wanted to take the breastplate off and lie. Right. So if the Catholic Church just settles for 880 million in L.A. alone for decades of child sex abuse. Right. Again, the, the church needs a requiem and it trickles down. It's just not. The Catholic Church is just not, you know, Protestant Church. You know what I mean? This this also affects the Baptist. We know what was going on in New Birth before Jamal Bryant got there. I know you can't ignore that. You know what I'm saying? And these things are, 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 are prevalent and they're very important when it comes to, again, the potential compromising of the magnetic field is taking place because... The concept of Christ should still be a sacred thing, even regardless of how other people desecrate it and use it. There's 45,000 different denominations of Christianity. So however other people choose to use it, we know what our Nana's connection was. Once again, we know how strong her magnetic field was. We know what her ability to get her prayers answered was because she never compromised her integrity once she's set into her core, this is what she believes. That becomes her ringing bell. When she goes against what she attempts to believe, then that creates a schism. Whether she's able to fill that schism, you know, like in Japan, when they break pots and they fill it up with gold mm -hmm. and it makes it stronger. That's how Nana has to, all right, you want to go from religious to conscious. You started listening to Bobby Hammond and you want to level up. You got to get these goddamn ceremonies, the spiritual bath and these rituals together. Right. You got to be able to pivot without compromising your integrity. She did it because it felt right. And it's just something over here didn't feel right. So she was going with a feeling. She won't be held accountable or castigated for that. You feel me? But if she sold some cat because she needed to pay rent or something like that, you know, what I mean, and she wasn't open and vocal about asking for help. Maybe that might be the schism that she can't fill up. So these gaping holes start happening. And this is your spirit. You know, you get compromised. Next thing you know, you're playing host for a walk-in. And you got whole possessions going on. And we're looking at that. So the black church as an institution is compromised because it does not give young children hope. It does not give them vision, right? It's not giving them the things that they're looking for. It's not giving them identity, Right. They're not showing that they can handle the things that can be handled like they took. Instruments and art out the, out the out, of, out of the schools. Why haven't the churches just been the institution to replace that? If you want to get children right, go back to instruments. If you want to get children, go back to art. Like there's a lot of way to connect with our people, but they're not making that connection. You feel me? But. The church has now become a rest haven for hoes because there's old thoughtuses out here that are now running to the church to become reformed hoes. That's a whole new movement.
And I salute it, right? Hoes for Jesus is big <laughs> in these streets. And I hope I'm not offending, you know, no reform hoes out there that are listening to this. But I see y'all. Y'all got a whole movement going out there. And by golly G, it, it coincides with the times. Just know that you're on time because the whole Jezebel spirit conversation taking place around Kamala. What, what, Come. Huh? Kamala. Kamala. Hey, right. we getting there, Blue. You good? Hey, we getting there. And hey, we getting closer each time. <laughs> Look, a reform <laughs> blue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. Man, blue. We got you here, brother. And, you know, hearing you even bring up her name right now, you know, we have mm -hmm. slogans like vote blue, no matter who. Right. Mm -hmm. And talking about Nana, Big Mama, I think that there is this yearning for Big Mama energy right now. And even hearing a Van Jones who does not represent black men, I don't think just at all, but hearing them say that, call her Mama Kamala, right? And yeah, he said this on CNN, he called her Mama Kamala. <laughs> and we have so many black women supporting her, black men too. Why do you think in this current time? Because I feel like it's overall for me, like the perfect storm, because if you try to critique her, you can't do that. She's a woman, she's a black woman. And being able to push her because she's a AKA, you got Devon Nye that can now push her, vote her in as well. I think that she's like the perfect candidate for that because now she can get pushed, she can be backed. Um, why do you think right now that there's this natural yearning for Big Mama energy right now? Again, like I said, she she's in alignment with the timings, right? Her name represents time. She is the Kali, mm -hmm. right? Because there's different versions of Kali. Right. And the version that is Kamala is the version that represents time. Hmm. Right. She is synonymous with that narrative. Again, she's a DA who gave out a lot of time. Hmm. Right. Yeah. She's a she's a, a person who is packaged and presented at this particular time when she's on time. Right. What hasn't the country seen a woman president, whether melanated or not? You know what I'm saying? Just this whole concept of what this paradigm shift can potentially represent and it's in alignment like i said the fact that the frontline defense against white supremacy is melanated women right now right and there is a need and a necessity to push back against trump and trumpism and what it represents in terms of stale western white male psychology right which has delved into psychiatry or, or you know psycho stuff whatever it's just crazy it's 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 white male western psychology they have an acronym they call it weird western educated independent rich and democratic that's what the dems their their acronym is weird right for the white boys that are republican let's say that's was white anglo-saxon protestants you know what i'm saying they're losing their shit and I was reading an article and, and, and the white boys are saying the Civil War for us started in 2008. Now, they're masking it and saying, oh, this is when the housing crisis happened and we found out that we were not who we were always raised and taught to be. And this is when we first kind of figured out that our position here in this country is being compromised as us being one, the face of it or the future of it. That also was compounded in that year when they had to live under a black president, melanated, regardless of how you felt about him, right? Why don't you put yourselves in the psychological profile of a white man who you want to be so bad anyway, you spend the rest of your goddamn time thinking like you him. Mm. So imagine what he felt when he was taught that this is his country, his people killed for it and yeah. died for it. And now they got a black man leading it. Shakes the foundation. What do you think it did to his fragile mm. psychosis? Right? He's looking at himself in ways that you can't even imagine. You go through your own body dysmorphia, dysmorphism. What you think his is like when he got to look at himself in the mirror, nigga? Why you think he's so angry when he see you? Have you not figured that shit out yet? Right? And you spoke of something earlier, like all of this shit is primal. 
If you're not approaching it from a primal perspective first before you dress it up and all of these subtleties that they give us, nigga, it's primal. Everything goes back to mating at the end of the day. What is my preference to get the piece of punani that I want to bring my progeny here? That's what it cuts down to. Then we can dress it up. It's scorpionic, right? I came here to mate, procreate, and reproduce. Whether I pass some bread on to that nigga, you call it generational wealth. After All of this is shit that we could dress up after the fact. You feel me? So the white boy don't feel comfortable in a country that he considers to be home. He don't feel comfortable for himself. He don't feel comfortable for his women. Because his women is choosing now. The tanning of America is on him. Then he got to watch this amalgamated nigga who's a version of that become his president. And he's scared to death. Because the nigga coulda, woulda, right? They was having, which all of them commercials about 3 a.m. was about. The 3 a.m. <laughs> thing, I can't sleep. This nigga might go radical. He might go Huey P. Newton in the middle of the night. <laughs> and that's what Trump tapped into and figured it out. And he appealed to them because he played to that fear, right? And now they're quietly stoking that, right? It's different because it's a black woman. But they can't beat a black woman. They haven't beaten one in a long time. Right? In a long time. We seem to forget about Condoleezza Rice. Born on my born day. We seem to forget about Condoleezza Rice. How you already technically had a melanated woman running this country. From the shadows. Because it wasn't George W. And I don't think it was Dick Cheney. Pause. It was really <laughs> Condoleezza Rice. Right. Right. But do you know that we have a candidate right now that is also named Harris is running against Marjorie Green? No. no, no, no. So how bad do we want it? Do we know that we got a melanated person running against Ted Cruz? So how bad do we want it? How bad? How bad is the brand? How bad, how damaged is the brand that we take some things so offensive that we got a list of ops? We like, we got to get them out of the way by any means. Have we even like coalesced ourselves on some killer swarm of bee shit to take out our, our ops and our, no, we haven't. Cause right here in Georgia, right a district up away, there's a melanated man who's a general whose last name is Harris running against Marjorie Green. And she's an issue for us for real. And we could affect Right. Local politics a lot more easier because we could have made it a national campaign. We could use all these platforms. She shit on all of them women. The the Tamika Mallory's of the world, all of these people who are pom pom cheerleaders now for the Harris presidency. Why you not? Why you not focus on the whole spread? If it's really an issue, if it's really a thing, if we really flex in our powers. Why is it so selective? Into a situation where you got to agree and say, all right, now I am participating with knowingly saying once again that I'm voting to make blackness the face of the brand that is not the brand that I belong to. Right. So now blackness is the face of America, Inc. Right. At the cost of what? The face of blackness. Mm. Whatever that shit is defined as. Right. Because that black face is not connected to a black mind. And the second opinion is not black. She got to speak to her husband. And then we think the goddamn candidates or, or actual presidents make decisions. We think that it's their th same way the niggas think that their votes determine presidents. They think the presidents make decisions. That's how lost we are. That we don't know that regardless of who we voting for, we voting for the IDF. And where, where, where's, where's the, it's just, uh, these are just two, fit, two different versions of extremes. Like one going through the front door and the other going through the back door. But when you get inside, God damn it, you still gonna see the IDF. So <laughs> whether it's, um, Adelson, the lady, Miriam Adelson, whether it's her, who she's the, the, the she's an ultra Zionist and the richest woman in the country, Right. So whether it's her directly funding all of Trump's plays and saying, I own this presidency because I pay for it. 
or whether it's the fact that your president is going to be an ice off, right? With a menorah in the White House. My nigga, either which way you get in the Zionist state that they're willing to do something about their brand identity damage, right? And then they're willing not to do something about it. Look how they flex their goddamn privilege and their access to your birthright. Look what they did with it. What you willing to do with it, right? You don't want to kill nothing or let nothing fly unless it looks like you. So it's like, yeah, drill away. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Free dirt. Wow. Connecting everything, Blue. This session right here, brother, one for the books. LeBron James, recently, he made a, a tweet, you know, shouting out Big Meech right across the street <laughs> from the iconic Magic City where Meech, he used to bless and I already know when he's back. He'll be there frequently, probably for sure. But seeing how people like a Jason Whitlock or ESPN or Fox Sports, everybody's talking about why are we trying to make Big Meech this icon? But in that moment, Blue, of course, you know, being from Atlanta, I remember growing up driving past on North Side and the billboards, it was there, BMF, right? It was everywhere. And knowing that Meech, of course, didn't just impact it and impact culture and black people on the streets, but as well through like everyday life. And, you know, from the stories that I've heard about him being a great leader, a blessing people. Some people tell me that the most money that they ever made was with the big meets, right? Um, but again, even seeing our own people say on social media that we shouldn't be trying to put this man in reverence. He's a monster. Uh, he killed other black people. He had our, our people on drugs. But then I think about the Kennedys. I think about so many other white families who were able to build empires off of drug business and then being able to make it legitimate or bootlegging, all of those things. Do you feel like a big Meech and our dope boys who did sometimes give back or a Bumpy Johnson who would give back, um, do you think that it's possible for these people to still be morally good or do you think that we shouldn't put these people on a pedestal? Because Blue, American culture as a whole, we love the Sopranos, we love the Godfather, Boardwalk Empire. We watch Power, Godfather of Harlem. We are obsessed with this snowfall. So how do you feel when people try to critique a big meet and say that, oh, we shouldn't put this man on a pedestal? Again, yeah, our heroes are anti-heroes, right? Our heroes are anti-heroes. And it, it would have to, like, I was writing a poem the other day and I was speaking about, I used to root for Serpentor. Like, I'm not gonna side with the G.I. Joes, Uncle Sam and them. Again, it, it, show, it depends on how you show up. I was raised as in, in a rebel household to be a rebel. So if even if I come outside as the Christ, I gotta be anti-Christ to the system. If the system is built on a pile of lies and, and these these institutions that are, you know what I mean? Not the face of, of the essence behind the thing that they claim to be, right? So the hero would have to be the anti-hero in a society that is not one built on truth, that is one that's not built for the righteous because there's nothing about this society that edifies righteousness. You know what I'm saying? They, they have been institutions that have been put in place to destroy the black messiah to hunt down and destroy the black messiah the rise of one by any means is government policy to stomp it out that's what domestic presidential politics affords you right the bully pulpit and the ability to monitor and stamp out the rise of a black messiah and then the your, your foreign policy is to do that internationally with the best the rest of the cohorts right who all do not want to see that happen because it's going to mess up Everybody's bag. You feel me? Everybody's bag is going to be destroyed by the rise of this particular entity or this ideology, right? Hence the fact that they said that there's a war on woke, right? So how does how far does that trickle down before it gets to the the, the base level where the fossils is at and it's a war on consciousness, where the oil is at, right? When they finish drilling through all of that surface level ish, 
and they get to the progenitors, the backbone, the things that's really hoisting and holding this up. The fact that they had to slap and shellac a new name on it to hide the fact of what the hell was taking place on 125th Street, the spine of it. How long is it going to take? You know what I'm saying? So, again, you're either going to deal with the IDF or you're going to deal with Whitey's mess. You got a choice. That's what you're voting for. But either which way, it's not going to it's not going to let you. You can't hide from your fears. You're going to have to face what you're going to have to. You're going to have to. <laughs> what you're looking for is looking for you. You've been talking all that smack all this time. And now it's here. And what is niggas doing? They running up underneath them pokes and, and <laughs> you know, now nah, I was just playing. Let me get up underneath this deodorant, man. I loved you all this time. I heard a mass teacher. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> hey, you trying to be good today. I ain't gonna do it, man, but <laughs> this is the most bitch assness I have ever seen in mm. my life. And it's so many ciphers to win it and ate the steak. You know what I mean? Instead of standing up to this machine and knowing, you know, it's just a test at the end of the day. You feel me? And, and a lot of people are failing miserably. What was the original question? Man, you was flowing, Blue. Honestly, I forgot. <laughs> oh, he's talking oh, about Meech. And the dope man, so, yeah. Yeah, it's like, niggas, they can't look up to these conscious niggas. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like, what are we left to look up to? Because you, you got to look up. If you don't want young people to look down on it, you keep telling them don't look down and look up. All right, what are they looking up to? What are they aspiring to? aspirational hip-hop was the bad boy era that was 30 years you know meach flourished during those times i interviewed meach um brilliant man yeah. and he had leader qualities because the people that i knew that was running with him these are the people that other people looked up to hmm. these are the people that was very hard to rein in because of the size of their ego and, and what they initially felt about themselves and they they met somebody who their light eclipsed their light, but not in, the, in a degree where it stamped their light out. He still let you shine. You know what I'm saying? Still let you shine. So we used to always be like, damn, like, imagine if he was conscious because he has a militant slant. You know what I mean? He always spoke militant. He always spoke about, you know, not allowing the quote unquote man to be the man. You know, taking back the title of Massa for Massa. And his brotherhood. You know what I mean? And not allowing certain things to interfere with that, you know, and, and, and equal, equal, equanimity amongst the brotherhood. You know what I mean? You got this, you got that, so you don't got scheme on what I got. You feel me? But feed your people, feed your family, feed your soldiers, lift your city up if possible. He was, you know, participating in a dirty game. So judge ye not, I don't want to cast judgment on a man. And I don't also want to be um, naive when it says fuck what I think and what I oh I don't think we should follow drug dealers and yeah but we do and we have for the longest and that's the whole case to the point you know what I'm saying the exception has become the rule and they are sitting at the top of the nigga hierarchy we've been entertained by his narrative for what three years on BMF yeah. and people are not supposed to welcome him home this nigga is I mean he's larger than life if according to everything that you tell me, we're supposed to die, go to jail. So here's this nigga who went to jail that's not dead. Right? And, and his final season hasn't even come out in the realm of entertainment. You feel me? And, and the niggas that you look up to, look up to him. So what do, again, we're not being realist, realistic about where we're at, who's in charge. You feel me? Or where this thing is headed. You know, I think that there's hopefully life after prison for Big Meech. And hopefully it would be in the capacity of him showing his leadership skills and qualities to younger men and women in this country who he don't want to see go to the penitentiary because he has the ability to do that. You know, what I mean, as long as he's compensated for those abilities because. He deserves it like. He's in, you know what I mean? Like you, you would want to keep him on your side if that's the things that you want him promoting and doing for the culture. 
You feel me? Because he got an open ticket to do anything else from anywhere else or anybody else that feels like, you know, this is the game personified in, in, in the form and in life of one person. Because, again, yes, Big Big Meech made sure that everyone around him ate and they fed entire ecosystems. That's like when Mansa Musa came through, you yeah. feel me, and propped up economies. That's how it was. I seen it in Atlanta. I seen it when they went to Florida, to Miami. I seen them prop up economies everywhere that they went. You know what I'm saying? I seen them put a, a different sheen and luster on the nightlife shit that, again, was still hostage to what Puff and, and New York promoters was doing. I seen them blow that shit out the water. I seen them become the personification of the shit that rappers was just rapping about but didn't have the budget to actually do because none of these niggas was willies coming out of New York. They was all nickel and dime niggas with, with record contracts. They really didn't have the heart and the will to be leaders to make other people follow their movements. Ne'er, not one of them niggas. Ne'er, ne'er, ne'er one of them. Right? So if he had the criteria to be the official tissue like that, in this society, because of what it has become and, and the fact that a lot of it came out of the soil that he planted, why should he not be able to benefit from that until something else is done you know what I mean? To create a new reality. And that has not been done yet. These niggas don't have the gonads to go against the people at the top of that dominant hierarchy. The feds is doing it for, you know what I mean? For the culture. They the only ones getting these niggas out the way. And then we cry when that happened. But we say that something needs to change. How's it going to change? How, how, how is, again, catching a body and rhyming about it and then creating a career from it and then being contracted by a multinational, transnational corporation that's also making bread for me. And you going on tour with it. And it is like, I feel for his children. It's like, what has he been feeding? He's been feeding his children sloth with blood in there for how long? And he was gang gang before he was the daddy. So who he really belonged to? Because I've been to them gang funerals, my nigga. And they tell the mama, step aside. We got this. Your child is not yours. Right? And she has to come to terms with that stark fucking reality because they want to put goddamn bullets in the goddamn tomb and a bottle of Hennessy and a flag. And she can't put the baby pictures in there because that ain't your baby, mama. Mm. When, when we going to deal with that? We don't want to deal with these stark realities. But we want to, again, it's real handsome and cute to get online and be like, what about their kids? Come on, son. Like, their career was making mamas cry. Destroying magnetic fields. It all reverberates. And the white boy is coming like the white cancer cell, cleaning up the cancer. So, yeah, we, we, we are tasked with looking at two stark realities, you know? What would the cleanup continuously continue to look like under a second term Democratic administration with a D.A. who represents time now in place to be president who has to show and prove that she's hard on crime? Right. Because she got to cut her teeth. So this is this is where the Democrats was at when when um, Joe Button had to pass the crime bill in 94. They was coming out of the Bush era. And the, the, and the Republicans were saying the Dems was too liberal. They're too soft on crime, which means what? You care too much about these niggas to really put a foot on them. And that makes us worried about you. And we're going to go tell these white people, so it's the next, hold on, hold on now. Hold on. If you just need us to see a sacrifice of niggas, that's all you need to just be chill. We're willing to do that, right? And then you become the bargaining chip to keep white voters in place so they don't kick these niggas out. From the Blue Lodge. That's all this shit is. They playing table tennis with your black ass. And you ain't figured it out yet. Right? But you want me to join you because it's miserable at top. But, but no. I'm going to be over here just watching this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The same way that I got on the roof and I watched the towers come down mm. on September 11th. It's the same way I'm going to be, you know, on the roof proverbially somewhere on the top of a mountain. You know what I'm saying? Watching the smoldering smoke 
of this thing because regardless of which way it goes, you're going to have a large swath of the populace that are going to be pissed off and they're going to be at their wit's end. You feel me? And a lot of people feel like they're losing grasp of their reality um, based on, you know, how this thing is playing out politically. And they're right. Right. And, and, and the melanated mind and the melanated man, along with his woman, they have to they have to make a, a, a key observation because it's a fork in the road and it's going to go two ways. You know what I mean? And you can sustain and live in either situation, but you got to be mentally prepared. You know, this is why we train. We could pivot any which way, but the determination of this presidential can candidacy more so changes the face of a global order. Right? And there's two different ways that this thing can potentially go. And you have to be prepared to engage in either way or a hybrid of both. You know? And that takes a lot of concentration, dedication, and conversation amongst people who 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 know who know how to read the tides you know what i'm saying how to read the omens who know how to move with these signs and these times to get in front of it so you're not underneath it because it's not going to be cute it's not going to be cute if they pull the plug over here you know what i'm saying so i'll go back and repeat what i just said at the the european the 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 weird and their acronym is weird right white educated, independent, rich, democratic, right? Then you got the wise, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, you know, who because uh, it's weird, right? With the weird label that fits in, let's say somebody who might be ethnically Jewish. I don't know if we could say that on this broadcast or not, but then when you get to the Republicans, right, they want to play this game like because they're christian nationalists and evangelicals and what we consider to be white or wasp that they don't have a space in their home for you know these quote-unquote folks with the jewish identity they can shape shift into both mm. whenever they feel to because it's such a uh a, a amorphous term that is like well you was white yesterday then you put on the Jewish thing today and you, what you different from them? How does this shit go? What are the rules? We don't know, right? So they playing these weird games and the white fragility is saying, I feel like the war started in 08. 08. So this, y'all been plot planning and strategizing because you got your feelings hurt since all the way back then. And their slogan is like, never again. We don't want to feel like that. We don't want to feel in a place where we feel inferior to these people or they're leveling up or we have to be worried that we can't sleep at night or our children might be in harm. Yo, don't teach them niggas no more. Man. So then stuff starts in the school. Yeah. yeah. Look, I don't want them niggas in all, all of this fragility. DEI, right? Get them away. So they're xenophobic in, this, in their own quote unquote homeland about having to share, having to answer to you, having to apologize to you, because it's their ideology. They can't change it. It's set in stone. So we in our feelings about MS. That's who they are. That's who they are. They, they've only made nigga jokes their entire lives. You want them to stop now for what? Because you in your feelings. They know that you got bitch in you. They looking at the puffy shit. Just they like all of your faves is on all fours. Right? And you women wonder why you ain't got no men. That, and then you out here telling them all your business. They just sitting back creating psychological profiles about how hurt you are. Right? So either way it go. You feel me? They're coming down with the hammer on you because of their fragility. They're going into Dharma mode after this, which are, which regardless of which way they go, if 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 they get him back in, they're going to feel like they got the license to ill. If they don't get him in and it's a black woman in there, then they're going to have a license to ill, but they're going to mutate her body. Same way they've been doing for the last two years. We could pull the articles up, right? 
There's more black women been found in suitcases, goddamn it, in the last two years than in a long time. They're mutilating her body. They're sacrificing her in ways we've never seen. And this shit is about to go into overdrive, especially since they've seen that the black man is not willing to defend her by any means whatsoever. And the only ones that are showing up, they know them niggas is on all fours too at the Diddy party. So they like, she she went and got the whole ca- <laughs> She borrowed from the whole party list. She like, yeah, let me, can I get us? <laughs> <laughs> you wild, Why Big Bill? <laughs> you wild. <laughs> when the fat Joe become the ambassador of blackness, this nigga's name Joey Crack. Facts. I'm just saying, bro, look, look how we have been, comp- look how they got us. Mm. This shit is just goofy all the way around the board. Let me, should I go into consciousness now? Please. <laughs> it was like, yo, I did enough. Woo! Come on, bro. Classic session, Classic Blue. Community, boy. I'll just say this. Why is nobody filing briefs to ask the Anunnaki's for reparations, my nigga? If they... That's a bar. Let me watch this camera. Hold on. Yes, sir. <laughs> If they, according to what you're telling me, were the progenitors of our slavery, because they came to buy gold, first of all, shame on them niggers, because the shit, even if it was flat around, why they ain't know that there was gold in the Americas? And Columbus and them had to find all the gold over here, but you're telling me that they brought them to South Africa hundreds of thousands of years ago to be goddamn slaves, so how are you going to preach to them out of one version of your mouth? That we was genetically mutated and made to be slaves, but then they telling these niggas that ye are gods. <laughs> Sheesh. Ask the Anunnaki's for reparations. They was your first slave masters. Y'all keep talking about the Arab slave trade. What about the Anunnaki slave? <laughs> I'm going to leave that there. Yo, my man Blue was in rare form. <laughs> Dropped 44 tonight. <laughs> Listen, yeah, brother. Man, on the way out, 44, Blue. 44, yeah, man. This has been phenomenal. Come on, man. The shades, the blue light. Uh, Tia, yes. we were talking yes. earlier. Everybody, like what you said earlier, is looking down. Nobody's, don't look up. Everybody's on our phones. These babies are being raised. By the iPad. Tablet toddlers, yes. Tablet toddlers. Yeah. Why are you wearing the shades that you're wearing right now, Blue? My, <clears throat> shout out to my brother, KT, the arch degree. Yes, sir. The progenitor of Fight Omega 3. Mm. So after 2020, which was the highest flying year of my life, I was 44 that year. I could not even, I still, I can't conceive to this day how I was able to do the amount of things that I did in 2020. It was just, a, it was just phenomenal. It was a breakout year. And, and uh, you know. I can't apologize to anybody that had that. You know, I'm just sorry. I just my year was amazing that year, but 2021 and around July, my body shut down one day, it just shut down, and I didn't understand why because I was taking all the products, I was doing all the shit that people say you're supposed to do, but I started day trading. I was getting that crypto bread right, and I was good at it. <coughs> so I would go to sleep at 6:30 and wake up at 8:30, but I was still hear pings in my sleep. Cause I was on Discord, telling I was on everything. But everything was pinging, ping, 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 right? <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm sleeping. I'm really not, cause I'm hearing the pings of my sleep. I'm not getting REM, and I'm only laying down for two hours. I'm taking a nap for the most part, getting to this bread, and my body shut down. And what you know, I'm calling KT because I'm throwing all of my products at it. Ain't nothing shifting it, and I'm like, bro, you got something for me? And he like, go outside. And I was like, come on, son. Like, <laughs> I need. I, I don't need to hear that shit right now. Like, what are you talking about? The grounding and all that. He's like, yeah, you need to go and ground yeah. and connect to the circadian rhythm. And I'm like, <clears throat> and again, I, you know, I've, I've taught this. I've spoke on it. You know what I mean? And at some points in my life, I've been consistent and done it. But it hasn't been. It wasn't really a lifestyle, and I was fronting. So I was like, "Damn, I gotta, I gotta defeat my biggest demon, 
Me. I got to exercise my biggest demon, which is my night demon. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm a notorious oil lamp burner, right? I burns the midnight oil. I, I deep dive. I, I go where Osiris go at night into the underworld. You know, from the age of 14 to maybe 40, I think I was like a club promoter between a pocket of that. I mean, you would think I, I was just in the club every night, nonstop. Like, that was my night. That was my life. The nightlife was my life. So just the thought of waking up, you know what I mean, after a decent amount of rest means that I would have to go to sleep around 9 or 10 to get up at the hours that people were saying I needed to get up to tap into the circadian rhythm or the sunrise and get the sun gazing. And now I would set my alarm. I would go to sleep at 4 or 5, maybe set it, get up at 7.30 or 8, catch a little, go back to sleep. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't really the fullness of the experience. You want to get seven or eight hours of sleep, get up and engage it. You know what I'm saying? And preferably do something physical to get certain body, you know, certain cer certain um body processes activated. So when that serotonin start releasing and you really could get to what you need to get to, once again, you can feel the fullness of what this dopamine hit is hitting for. And I took KT up on his offer because he was, you know, like, yo, this is what you really need. You need to do this. These are the symptoms. And, and it sounds like that. So the only way to get in front of it is I left no option. And I did it. And <clears throat> I did it for like two weeks. And it repaired me. It restored me. And then I went back to my nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> as soon as I was out, like, oh, all right, nightlife. <laughs> I'm bike. Studio, <laughs> this is Facts. parties, blah, 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 everything, right? Yeah. Or just, you know, Netflix and chilling and smoking the indigo and waking up in the couch. You smoking the indigo couch and you wake up in the couch, TV looking at you and shit. It's like 4 30, you got to be up at 7 or 8. At least set your alarm to act like you up because your phone could start ringing and you don't want the niggas to catch you. You be like, hello, they, like you just woke up. <laughs> no, nigga. <laughs> I've been up for two hours. <laughs> what you talking about? Don't you know I'm conscious? <laughs> Grand rising. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm a demon scroller. Mm. So I get up late. Right or after my alarm, after it's consciously, you know the grand rising yo, you said hour. Been up after, for two everything hours. after that is good morning. Yo, it's like, the nigga, conscious if highlight. If you don't get up before <laughs> yoga hours, you can't say grand rising. You can't be up at eleven talking about grand rising if you your shit ain't time stamped at seven thirty. Because mm. this is when the grand rising niggas get up. Okay, <laughs> so you a good morning nigga. You still in the pack. You still in the pot. <laughs> So I would be the good morning nigga. You like right, right. I was it. Nigga, like you just woke up. <laughs> like nah, it's twelve o'clock, son. Why you sound like you just woke up? <laughs> I was demon scrolling, <laughs> trying to find out the world is safe. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> so I was him, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but. Nigga, there's nothing you could call me about and ask me news wise. I ain't know. Cause I read every newspaper, <laughs> every comment, every nigga's post. Okay. It was nothing that got away from I got the three car Monty set up. I want my phone, my tablets open, and my laptop. Mm. Okay. And I counting the TV as well. That's a whole different. <laughs> I don't yeah, the TV ain't on. You got the TV the off. TV's only for Netflix. Yeah, got we you. in the daytime. Monitoring news. I got you. Know you. What I'm, saying? I'm catching the feeds. Right? So, yeah, I, I, at some point, um, in order to get into this, the, this, this, this fitness regimen that I have been on now for, I think this is my 18th strong, I'll call it a week. Congrats. Um, I had to put to sleep my demon, which is my night demon. So it wasn't possible for me to do because <clears throat> I had to get up at 3.33 to leave at 4 to get in the gym by 4.30 to warm up to get started by 4.44 to be finished by 6. Could be ready for the sun when it come up around 8. You know what I'm saying? And we, then we, and then that just, you know what I mean? What I found out about waking, getting the sun when it comes up is that UVA, that red infrared light that KT was always telling me about that I didn't understand 
the specific sciences on until I got physically involved with my own personal vessel and being and started seeing the transformations and then having to entertain with everybody was telling me about food. Yo, how, this is how you put on weight. This is how you put on pounds. This is proteins. I started at 130 and I had a goal to get to 144 um, and 144 days. And I did it in 79 days, um, thankfully. Ooh, yes, sir. Excellent. Um, and 79 is the atomic number of gold. Hmm. And I did it on the day the goal hit its all times high in its 44th year. Yeah. Wow. So, so and that was my gold body challenge for myself. Yes, sir. And so in order to, to properly do that, I had to go deeper to research. And I ran into a dude named Dr. Dr. Jack Cruz. And Dr. Jack Cruz was speaking all about infrared and UVA and, and melanin and how to activate it. You know what I mean? And he was really speaking about the the, the endocrine receptors and, and everything that you need for the most part is in the gut. You know, allowing the sun to not just go through the retina of the eyes, not just sun gaze, but expose the skin to the sun, but especially the stomach, the gut, you know, grounding. Then I took grounding to the next level because I, I'm, I'm a student of a martial arts system called Bakwa. And Bakwa teaches you how to do a technique called screwing to the earth. You know, so there was just so many different things that I was learning or that I had already learned microcosmic orbit from Montauk Chia, how to utilize ejaculation to create this whole Superman strength. You know what I mean? I was just doing everything that I had learned. And, but the pinnacle foundation of it was me getting up, popping up, challenging myself to be so consistent that I can't be a minute off from three 30 to four. You know what I mean? You got to hop in the shower, get dressed. You know what I mean? Take my gold, take my sports moss. You know, wait on my lady, make sure that she get, you know, manage it. We got to be out. This shit's like military. You know what I mean? So that consistency, getting in the sun, when the sun rays, sun gaze, sun graze, sun days, sun bathe, you know, and then monitoring how I'm feeding my body throughout the day and then getting rest and prioritizing my rest and making mad sacrifices, cutting mad people off that don't respect my peace. You know what I mean? And just not having the the extra energy to give to things that have no residual return on my investment. My investment is my time, my energy, my focus, my magnetism, my mag, you know, all of these things that you are now immersing yourself in, you feel it differently. You know, again, I'm, and also I, I left out a component we were getting on seven to eight grams of mushrooms that we call mud in the morning that we mix with the coffee bean. You know what I mean? So I'm hyper aware. I'm hyper focused. I'm hyper sentient. Right. But not when you're in the gym, you're, you don't, you're not psychedelic. Like you're not loopy because you're under 2000 pounds and still your spirit is on a cross in your body. You're very present. You're not drifting aloof or off or anything. You're just hyper aware. And then it allows you to arrest fear, right? It allows you to arrest fear and suspend it. So I'm not even thinking about going and killing myself. I'm running to go and kill myself. But once I end up not dead, then the confidence that I get from that, then I start feeling like I cannot die. And then there's nothing else that you don't want to go conquer. Once you conquer your fears, that a fucking false evidence is appearing as real because you're entertaining them. It ain't happened yet. Right, the, the you didn't get bit by the big bat. It just didn't happen yet. You could go under the bed and you're gonna cut. It didn't happen. Conquer it, confront it, challenge it. See if it even, see if there's anything there. Or some wizard of Oz shit. Pull the curtain back and it's it's nothing there, yo. You've been wasting all this time scared of some fictional shit. You feel me? The devil is guarding the ski mask, man. Stop playing. You're wearing a shiesty boo. Yeah, with a shiesty mask on, because <laughs> if not, then everything else that you're telling me, me using my logic, makes no sense. Mm -hmm. The fact that you told me that God is omnipresent and omnipotent, that means that he knows where the devil is at at all times. He's got a tracker device on him, and he can swat him. If he don't. So why is he playing these games? Why would he send his son to fight a fight that he was ducking from, and they send his fucking son back in a body bag? What? Stop playing these games. 
But if, if, if we approach it and we say that it's just the devil is God with a ski mask on because somebody got to be the bad guy, Scorpio, and nobody want to be the bad guy, right? But there would be no Judas. There wouldn't be no Jesus without a Judas. So the bad guy has a very prominent, important role to play in the narrative. You cannot have one without the other. But they're the same. They're brothers. They're twins. You know? And they're interchangeable. Sometimes I'm red. Sometimes I'm blue. You feel me? Yes, sir. So. Blue. I appreciate you so much, brother. This conversation right here, it was one of them ones. Thank it was you, funny, informative, relatable, everything, thought provoking. On the way out, man. Oh, yeah, the yeah. The products, so, talk to me, man. The gold water, everything else. Yeah, so in the mornings, like I said, you know, hopefully we're going to get to show y'all some of the footage of some of the miraculous things that we've been able to press this vessel to do mm -hmm. in the gym. And this is my, because they keep talking about diet. But I don't, I don't eat nothing in the morning. I, I can't go in there with nothing on my stomach. It might come up. Right. You know what I mean? Killing yourself, literally. So I'm on sports moss and gold. And that's what I count for everything that you'll see in the footage. Like, this is what I do. Wow. You know what I mean? Um, at night, <clears throat> I take the coach, my brother coach, uh, Rasar Hodge. He's an MD. He is one of the preeminent experts on the endocannabinoid system in this country. And he also, you know, we're not, a, you know, the psilocybin that we're taking in the morning or the rising is part of medical research with them legalizing, um, quote unquote, psilocybin for something called post-traumatic growth syndrome, right? Then once you get past pain, you know what I mean? There's a growth factor that you can acquire. You feel me? And for the people that are going through this trauma, for the people that are going through pain, you feel me? There, there, there is, um, there's a window on the other side of it. You know what I mean? There, there, nature has provided an answer and a solution. Um, but because of the a scheduling of what they consider to be controlled substances, we've been kept away from a lot of things that, that nature has provided to us to actually help us. And I think that we know that by now, you know what I mean? So the brother makes some amazing CBD pills that I utilize to go to sleep. Cause I, I take it down between eight, eight thirty and nine. Right. And when I get on my a game, it'll be seven. So I can get my full seven to eight hours. You know what I mean? Don't compromise that. Some people say that they take shorter times. Kudos to you. But there are biological anatomical processes that take place when you need to be asleep at a certain time. Your kidneys function at a specific time of night when they do the filtering. So you just got to get the rest. You got to allow your body to restore, rejuvenate and recalibrate itself. Um, my post, I take I take the sports moss for pre and post because it has what's called cordyceps mushrooms in it. And they help in the production of. ATP, which is where we generate our energy and our cells from and the mitochondria. And so when you take it post, it helps with deducing the production mm. of lactic acid, yeah. which is where the pain and the soreness come from. I don't go through none of that. So this is what I utilize. Well, I don't go through it at the same amount that somebody that's not utilizing cordyceps is going through. Mm -hmm. It I, I work out six days out, out of the, wow. the strong, you know what I mean? And I don't, my body gets stronger, so I don't get sore no more. Uh, anyway, and then I put the phytomega, which is phytoplankton, in my smoothie. My smoothie consists of coconut milk. I throw bananas in there at the time. Definitely sea moss. I use flaxseed. I use hemp powder. And I use chia seed. Now, all of these are proteins. So my should be like 80 grams of protein. Smoothie be so thick. Sometimes I throw almond butter. Sometimes I throw peanut butter. So what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I challenge myself to apply as much as the Afro bio, African biomineral balance diet that Sebi advocated for, you know, because there's no there's no research. There's no verifiable proof of, again, what he spoke about, if it is applicable to a body that wants to train and build muscle and compete. You know what I mean? Not just live in the huts and 
hug on trees and shit like that. But what if you got to this physical terrain? We got to train for this physical terrain. You know, we can potentially be up against something in, in any near time in the near future. We got to be ready. Right. But we also, you know, are living in a society where if you can produce more testosterone and not exert your masculinity in terms of it being received as toxic. But goddamn, like if it's under attack, then fight back. You keep telling me it's under attack, but nobody's talking about how to fight back. You feel me? Who's going to defend these babies? You know what I mean? What options are you uh, producing for the women? You love talking about what they not doing and how bad and this and that. And nigga, do you know what their options are? You know how they got to slide their fucking options these days to make something happen for themselves? And you just don't want to be better. Right? Or you want to get better to take yourselves to Becky. That's a whole nother conversation. I'm not going to touch on that, but... We're going to have to train like we never trained before. And I'm seeing it. You know what I mean? So it ain't like I'm speaking on something and I feel like even with consciousness, like, damn, is it catching on? How can you gauge it? Like what, my timeline. And I don't know if IG is just being biased. And I'm cool because the people and the individuals that I'm seeing, they look like winners. They look like they're part of the winner's circle. They look like part of the 144,000. They going for it. You know what I mean? They're they're tasking their body to do superhuman feats and, and things of that nature. Shout out to brother Kaba Kamena when he dropped the Super Sapien yeah. on, on me. I, I never was the same after that. I turned around and did a whole show on Clubhouse, you know, in 2023, just speaking on it like, yo, I love this concept. Like, why don't we let's talk? I think it was even in 2022 when he yeah. first it was at the end of 2022. And I heard that that slogan. And I seen it in my mind and I was like, yo, if 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 y'all keep saying that man is using AI to teach AI to become more human, I was like, why don't we program AI? Like, let's say if I tell AI I want to live to be 150 and an AI already know everything about me, the AI gives me a regimen of what it's going to take me to be 150. I'm like, let's use AI like that. Let's utilize AI to become better versions of men, not more machines. Use machine learning to become better humans, become super sapiens. So for me, this is like the beginning pinnacle part of that. I'll be 50 next year. And there's so many things that I have to do on the spiritual side of things before you cross into that um that level of priesthood but i'm I'm creating a space for people like myself to want to at least live to 150 and i feel that if, if if we're able to sustain life healthy for the next five years we'll find out how to live to be 500 because that's what that's what science is saying i'm not saying it just alone i'm very optimistic about that but that's where their science is leading because people have no idea the same people who are leading the transhumanism race. Um, what's these? Quincy Jones. Right. Ray Coswell, Right. All of the big dogs. They also are the ones. These are the billionaires that are funding and attempting to find out how to live longer. So they don't just want to put their consciousness and machines and computers and turn niggas into androids. They want to be around to see that shit, laugh on it, piss on it and spend their money. You know what I mean? So there's there's been so many so many scientific medical breakthroughs, just research wise, that we're able to see what the possibilities are gonna be in the very near future. I think that I've already generated stem cells that have reversed my personal aging, so I know it can be done. I'm only six months in. So I'm like, I gauge myself always, I give myself the grace that when I'm sitting here, I'm always looking and talking to myself a year, five years, and ten years from now. That's how I always sustain myself in the future. But I've already jettisoned myself to 2044 and Pluto and Aquarius so I can go through radical transformation in an available pocket of time that I already know exists. I don't have to be in my imagination. I just have to be intentional about the shit that already exists, put myself on a wheel and allow the wheel to take me where I need to go. And then do the work. Because I'm like, I love the things that I did in the first 50 years of my life, but the things that I'm about to do in the next 50 years of my life, 
those are the things that I, initially I would say keep me up at night, but those are the things that allow me to go to sleep obediently. Hold on. Peace, bro. Yeah, I do. I'm I'm literally um finishing this interview. Can you call me back in 10 or 15 minutes? All right, peace. Yes. Um the the that's brother Rich. How's brother Rich? Oh wow, that's crazy. Normally, yeah. That's like we spoke him up, huh? I got a call from Obama and shit. I couldn't (laughs) let that go. So yeah. Literally, um so excited about the future. I'm so optimistic about it. And I think that it's very important. Again, I'm gonna keep going back to magnetic fields. Brother Rich asked me two weeks ago to do a show on magnetic fields, and I was already researching it, but I, hmm. I went a little bit deeper because you know, you know what I'm saying? You gotta bring the A game up there. And I really been cracking this code. And because of my magnetic field, it has magnetized information to me to just be like me listening to myself. So this white woman was like. She went to this whole, she was, you know, a medical doctor. She went to this whole dissertation about the magnetic field. And she was like, and and the people that are best, then she got into the spiritual implications of it, you know, when she got into her Christos understanding, you know. And my journey also started, I did a lecture in February with Black Dot at Nicholas Bookstore, where I was talking about the hero's journey. I created a comic book that I created the Black Mythos Christos for Black History Month um, and leading into March, right before the battles happened. And when the battle happened with Kendrick and them, I was um, explaining that in the Black Christos narrative and researching that. And then again, I did a, a, a show on Brother Rich about subtle energy, which was a rehash of a lecture that I did in 2019 when I opened up for Billy Carson for Brother Rich in Brooklyn, right before I moved to Atlanta. I'm just reminding myself all this fly shit that I, was talking about and researching and and the spirit was just like it's time like fuck this research like if you're not gonna become these things nigga like what is your legacy (laughs) gonna be like you're just gonna talk about stuff that you read you're gonna talk about things that you think you're gonna point somebody else in a direction like ain't you the little nigga that always wanted to be the Shaolin monk with the three dots when you were six right Wait, where my shit at? Hold on. <laughs> Wasn't you? Because shout out to KT, because when he used mm-hmm. to tell me about this shit, I'd be like, I ain't got no time for that shit, nigga. <laughs> I grew up on for J- Ain't you the nigga wanted to be Goku mm. with them? Wow. Huh? That's hard. So I'm like, <laughs> you know, I grew up Bruce Lee and all that. So I'm just like, yeah. Jeez, my nigga. Crazy. Right? So, I, I, like I said, I had, I had did the subtle energy um, lecture, and it was talking about the fascia. It was talking about piezoelectricity. It was talking about magnet. It was talking about all of this high science metaphysical things that the body is able to do if you can find the concentration, the dedication, and the commitment to yourself. Because this is not going to come without consistency. And I just was remembering being like getting right there and falling back. I remember falling off, right? Because I was I had I was felt off at this po- point in time when I was thinking about not falling, you know, what do I do to not fall to, to come back from falling off? Cause I already know that I fell off. All right. I couldn't catch myself. The consistency wasn't there. It was gaps in it. And I wasn't getting the results to so get further frustrated with yourself. Cause you're working, but you're not working consistently. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's not breaking through the mold that send you this mediocre, you getting fucking suffocated by mediocrity and they like, nigga, I got you. I got you. It's going to be you. I'm a cocoon you, matter of fact. I'm going to crystallize you. You know what I'm saying? And I turn you into a fucking butterfly. Cockroach, nigga, flying one, no. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I had to fight. You got to fight. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I want to be a butterfly. <laughs> Fight, nigga. So, and then Rich hit me with a 5,000 pound job. He's like, yo, I want you to cook for the gathering of the masters. And that was a thousand plates. 
500 people each day. And I was like, I'll do it. And he was like, you are the sole food vendor. And then he brought somebody else on. So the pressure from that shit, when it finally hit me like a ton of bricks of what I had agreed to. And I was like, damn, I can't even get niggas to, um, to, to, you know what I'm saying? Like, Everybody's so flim flamsy. I can't get no commitments that are real. Like people say they're gonna do something, they don't do it these days. The shit is weird. Mm. And like since we started dealing with soft quitting and all of the weird shit that happened post COVID, mm. people's commitment just has been to shit. So Spirit was like, "But are you committed to something? You want people to do something? Are you capable of doing it? Mm. You want them to do the heavy lifting? What if you lift heavy lately?" So if you can't do this right here, right? Because the regiment was in front of me because my business partner was posting to social media because he was getting up every morning and doing it. You feel me? And I was feeling great for him, but awful for the fact that I wanted to participate, but I didn't have the willpower to get up and be in the gym by 444. But I'm talking this 44 shit. Right? So it was like five fears at once. That I had to conquer. But when I did it, that shit felt so good that I was like, oh, this is how you exercise your demons. Cause your demons is attached to shit that you're not willing to do. Every time you compromise your magnetic fields, demons get heavier and heavier. They they invite more friends over. Next thing you know, you know what I mean? They just ram shot in through your through your whole temple with their shoes on. They tracking all kind of dirt and mud in it. Like they just got off the the APVs and all of that, and they just running through the crib. And you got white fur on the rugs and all of that. Expensive shit that you pay for. They violating everything. They in the cabinets like the gremlins. They just violating. You know what I'm saying? They just violating. And you just stuck in the couch off of the indica, watching them, drooling on yourself. You know what I mean? Yo, stop. You get to take, they got the TV up. Nobody can hear you. You just, you just stuck. Yeah. And at some point I had to show, I had to prove to myself because that's shit about the legs as well. We want to lead this on a spiritual leg day. Mm-hmm. That you make commitments out of your mouth that your body don't believe. And they be like, I'm going to, I'm going to expose you in public. Nigga, you don't even believe this. Right. You make a commitment, a proclamation to the people about what you finna going to do. And your body's like, you don't got enough energy for that. You don't got enough commitment for that. Because the version of you that's going to be needed to do the shit that you're saying that you're going to do, I don't see it. That, that nigga's not waking up on time. He's not on time. He's out of time. So therefore, I'm going to stutter in public when you try to say it. Shit going to start falling. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the world that I don't believe you. Because your body and your mind, you got to get them to work together. They're separate beings and entities. They house the same vessel, but sometimes they don't get along because your mind know that your body's bullshitting. So I had to create that synchronicity where there was an agreement. And again, that can bolster and strengthen the magnetic field. So the, 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 the European lady, she said that the ideal body that could generate the heart frequency, which is the stronger resonator of your magnetic field, that can heal the world because she said you can push your magnetic field or your aura out to a distance where it can go around the planet. And she said the ideal physiology for that would be, you know, about 140, 160 pounds, you know, less than seven to eight percent lean muscle. You know what I mean? With, 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 with just a great ability, you know, in their heart to generate you know what I'm saying? That magnetic capacity. So I was like, yeah, you know, that's right. Like the more that I do this and the stronger that I ha- are, are becoming and feeling, you know what I mean? You just know that um, the more that you're working on yourself, you see that your environment and things that are connected to you start to change as well. So when I look at my timeline and my algorithm, I feel that it's connected to me. But all I see now is fitness. All I see is 70 year old women doing deadlifts, body and shit, like just defying all of the, the, and then I think about my, 
you know, not so much my parents directly, but let's say they're friends and my aunties and just so many people that are of age that got all of these health problems and issues and they're in pain and friends of mine with mothers with arthritis and everyone's body is just failing on them and attacking them, but they're holding on is that they're still here. They, they made it through C-19, you know what I mean? Like they're here for change still. They're still calling me for products so that they still want to fight. They still want to be here. What can we do to help them? So every day that I get a DM from somebody to be like, I went to the gym today, I got up, you know what I'm saying? Or I got my husband up, or I did this, or I did that because of your posts. I'm like, that's what somebody did for me, and I'm paying it forward now. Now there's somebody looking at them on their timeline, and they got up, and they're like, yo, I'm going to get up too. And it might take you to see that post for seven or eight, but as long as it's consistent, and you keep chipping away on a person's you know, this heart wall that they're building up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how you change the world. You know what I mean? One person at a time. But it starts with you. Mike Drop, Blue, I appreciate you, brother. Y'all make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Support Blue, tap it in, share this episode, man. We appreciate you guys. Yes. Peace. Peace.